Today, we're gonna do a compression test on this four cylinder Kia with the big, what do we got here? 1.6 liter. So first thing we need to do is we gotta get these spark plugs out and the coal packs off and we have to disable our fuel system. So this particular car is direct injected. Uh, there's plenty of different ways to disable fuel systems on, on all sorts of cars. Uh, this one's pretty easy because we can just unplug this big connector here that goes to all the fuel injectors and that's gonna disable the fuel system. Uh, some other cars you may have to pull the fuel pump fuse or the fuel pump relay and let the engine run till it runs out of fuel pressure or you can disconnect each fuel injector but you do want to make sure and disable the fuel one way or another. Uh, we're also going to disable the spark. On this one it's really easy since it's coil unplugged so if we unplug all four of the coils <clears throat> on this guy there's not going to be any spark but on a engine that maybe has a distributor or an older coil set up you, and you can't disable it, you can either try pulling the fuse again or unplugging that coil. Uh, if you can't do any of those, you wanna make sure and ground that spark plug coil to, to ground with a, a jumper wire or something like that because you need that spark to go somewhere. So you don't wanna be cranking over. So we got these unplugged. We're gonna zip out these coils. Set our ignition coils to the side. Then we gotta take out all four spark plugs on this one. You getting all that? Doing good, buddy. So I like to take spark plugs out by hand. Uh, it gives you a little more control. Uh, a long extension like this it is pretty tricky. Uh, you want to make sure and support this angle here so you don't break the porcelain on it. So uh, you don't want to just push on it because it's very likely that it'll angle the spark plug and break that porcelain. So I'll break them loose. Then just use my finger. They usually come out pretty easy. A lot of spark plug sockets have a rubber grommet in there that will help pull them out. Looks like this one's missing. There, we got that one. Let's see if we can fish this one out. Probably have to use a magnet on it. I do like take this time, I'll set the spark plugs in order, then I'll take time to take a look at them. You know, it's a good chance for an inspection since you got them out. Oh, uh, if you notice this one here, looks a little wet. I one in a cylinder four, so. Smelling it, it's kind of hard to tell what it smells like, but uh, definitely moist. So, something that might be uh, interesting there, so. Once we get all four out, we can get our compression test gauge out and uh, do this compression test. So gauge sets are all pretty similar. Uh, for the most part, they look really similar to this. It's gonna have a gauge. Gauge is gonna have a relief valve to relieve the pressure. Usually some style of quick connect in between the portion that screws into the, the cylinder and uh, the gauge itself. So that makes it pretty handy. So big thing there is you gotta match up the thread with your spark plug. So we're talking diameter, pitch, and length, or reach, however you'd like to call that. So if you notice, there's different reach with those. 
So if you have a spark plug that has a short reach thread, you definitely don't want to be putting a long reach in there because it could possibly contact the piston. Uh, this particular one, since it's a long reach, this one should be fine. Um, I'm not sure if that's the right thread pitch. It might be a 12 millimeter thread pitch. Kind of looks like it, just looking at it. Let's see if this one will go in. So that one's not it. So we have to use, in these kits, they have little adapters. I think it's stamped. Maybe it's not stamped on there, but this is a 12 millimeter pitch adapter. Uh, actually, we're gonna do that. Let's do it on this short one. You don't have to go crazy on these, just put these together snug, but you really don't want this, this end getting stuck down in the cylinder because it might be a little tricky to fish it out of there. So with the adapter on, we're just gonna run it in. All it takes is finger tight. You don't have to go crazy on it. So we got our gauge, our hose and cylinder one, got our gauge attached right here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna crank the engine over and we're gonna watch this build pressure. So there's a couple tricks with this. Uh, like I said, you gotta have your fuel and spark disabled. Uh, you wanna make sure that you have a uh, fully charged battery so it's cranking over at normal speed. Uh, and then we wanna crank it over several revolutions. So you'll see it build up in increments and we're gonna take that peak pressure. Uh, one thing to note, it is best to hold the accelerator pedal all the way open. Uh, that allows to, uh, plenty of air into the engine so it can give you an accurate compression reading. So on this particular car, I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna hold the throttle pedal, gas pedal all the way to the floor while I crank it and Jake is going to film the gauge here. So uh, if it's an older car, uh, you might have to have a, a helper help you with that, but this one should be pretty easy. So we're gonna film that gauge. Get a good shot of it. Come right here. You want it down here instead? All right, let me step around here. Let me step around here. So as you can see, we, we cranked it over a few times and we got, well, it looks like uh, about 175, 180 PSI. Um, it, sometimes it's a good idea to maybe do it twice on each cylinder, uh, just to make sure you're getting repeatable results. Uh, but to relieve that pressure, we have this pressure release button right here. Just push that down. It's gonna relieve that off. And then we'll, uh, we'll crank it over one more time just to uh, verify our results there. So cranked it over again, looks like 175, so pretty repeatable. So at this point, we're just gonna move down the line and we're gonna do the other three cylinders. Take the hose out, just move it to the next one. Make sure your adapter comes with it if you're using one. So here we go. So this one right there, it's about the same, 175, 180, so really similar. So what you're looking for here is similar results between every cylinder. So let's move to cylinder three.
So again, that's pretty close. What's that? That's 170. So uh, still pretty close. Uh, the, the general rule of thumb is you usually want it within 10, 15% of all the cylinders. So uh, you do have to do a little bit of math, you know, so if you think about if it was 170 PSI, 10% would be 17 PSI either direction. So let's go to cylinder four. So if you remember, cylinder four had the funny looking spark plug. So we're gonna see what happens here. So if you notice, we have, what's that, 110? Uh, that's not very great. So I think that might be an indicator of the health of our engine here. So uh, pretty simple to do for a compression test, but you gotta think of all the different places that compression could be leaking out of the cylinder. And uh, you can do a cylinder leak down test to help isolate where that pressure is going. So, but other than that, for a compression test, um, it's pretty simple. Take good notes and a uh, real good indicator of the health of the engine. And uh, from this point, all we gotta do is put it back together and uh, proceed from there, so. Cut. 